it's one of the world's busiest thoroughfares, Oxford Street, London. And like many another in Britain's noisy, fume-filled towns and cities, a street of adventure where the pedestrian competes with the motor car for room to move. It's jammed today and even more jammed tomorrow as the traffic builds up. Every year in Britain, there are 350,000 road casualties, three out of four in built-up areas. And every year, too, more and more space is taken by cars, with streets where people live turned into car parks interfering with essential services. And it's not only the dustman who suffers. The vehicles of Britain cause huge delays, the cost of which has been worked out at over 500 million pounds a year. The scrap heaps tell their story of a world made ugly as well as dangerous by the motor car. And finding a way to live with it means nothing less than a revolution in the layout of our cities, an end to street systems as we know them. This report points the way. It's the result of a three-year study of the long-term problem of traffic in towns and cities, led by Professor Buchanan, who once called Oxford Street the most uncivilized street in Europe. And here's its vision of the Oxford Street of tomorrow, with traffic and pedestrians on different levels. The main idea, to build cities with districts where traffic won't be allowed at all. Today, 11 million cars are on the roads. By 1970, there'll be 18 million. Inside 40 years, 40 million. To keep them all moving means motorways and flyovers and underpasses. It means traffic surveys, bold ideas and big spending. It means our towns and cities must be redesigned and rebuilt over the next 50 years, with their centres on two and even three levels, and traffic and pedestrians kept strictly apart. With its main network roads under the present surface of the city, London would be transformed to give traffic-free areas on a new ground level over the existing one. But London won't be rebuilt in a day. And for now, it must meet the challenge of the car with one-way systems like this at Mansion House. Or this on Alba Bridge. Two-way traffic most of the day, changing to one-way in the peak hours. Into London in the morning, out of London in the evening. It's an idea called tidal flow. Britain hasn't the space to meet her traffic problems with vast intersections on the American scale. Intersections which cover acres of land. But traffic flow projects are underway and others will follow at a cost of at least 10,000 million pounds over the next half century. Here's how Liverpool plans to cope with the car with a new city centre designed to handle the amount of traffic expected in 1985. Old streets and buildings will go to make way for a centre where traffic and people will be kept apart. They're even planning a second Mersey Tunnel, as the present one will have reached its full capacity by 1970. And the new Mersey sound looks like being that of the demolition squads preparing the way for the Motor Age Liverpool, with flyovers and underpasses and parking space for 30,000 cars. But even then, motorists who like to park all day will be discouraged. In some cities like Norwich, the conflict between pedestrian and motor car can't be eased just by sweeping away the old and rebuilding. For Norwich has a centre of architectural value, reflecting centuries of history fine old churches, the castle, and buildings that take you back to medieval times. Here are streets that echo the sounds of the 15th century, rather than the revving engines of the mid-20th. Streets built to last, streets nobody wants to see bulldozed to make room for the rolls and the mini, 
streets made for a population that went about on foot. Here the pedestrian and the car are closer to each other, and there's less room for both. The city's population is rising, and so is the number of cars. On a weekday, between 40 and 50,000 vehicles enter the old city, and many park on its streets. Norwich has its special problems. But hundreds of other towns and cities have one thing in common. Too many cars, not enough space. Those sixpenny symbols of strife, the parking meters, are no real answer to traffic congestion. Other ways of persuading motorists to keep out of city centres are being thought out. There's talk of pricing road space for journeys and even of allowing motorists to enter some areas only if they have a special licence. But who would qualify for a licence? That's anybody's guess. Whatever is tried, one thing is clear. Tomorrow's motorist will have to find his level. For even with multi-level garages like this fully automatic six-floor park for more than 450 cars in London, there'll still be more cars trying to enter our cities than there's room for. But what about this? A new town expressly designed for the motor car age on the basis that every family living in it will own a car. A town where traffic is concentrated on motorway-type roads built for free flow and safety. A town of peaceful coexistence between motorist and pedestrian. It's Cumbernauld in Scotland, and its planners have found a way of getting over some of the problems of a car-owning community. Here's one of the housing areas where no car can enter and where children can play without risk of being run over. And for the 70,000 people who will live in Cumbernauld, there'll be special pedestrian routes, footways with a built-in row of bricks that lead to the town centre and shops. It's what the planners call a second-generation new town, and it's going up to relieve overcrowding in Glasgow. Its centre is on a deck above the approach road, with shops and business premises on the deck. Yet even as Cumbernauld grows, and its builders work on the town that's meant to meet the impact of the motor car, it may have been overtaken in the high-speed drive into tomorrow. For some experts are already saying that its basis of one car to one family isn't enough, that many families in the future will own two cars. If the motor car is not to become our master, Britain has to face a revolution as drastic in its own way as the Industrial Revolution of nearly 200 years ago. It'll be costly. It'll mean a big upheaval. But unless we're prepared to restrict the number of cars coming onto the roads, there's no other way.